If you're a manga fan out there, then you must have come across Arte at one point or the other, but what you might not know is that the manga series has been adapted into an anime for the big screen. Now, sometimes we see mangas lose their character and a lot of the things that make them great when they are adapted into an anime, but it's not the same for Arte as you'll soon see. In this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at Arte the anime and looking at the story, the setting, plot, and how it compares to the manga version. We're also going to be talking about whether it's truly worth it to binge watch the show hashtag quarantine style. Fair warning though, there are going to be spoilers in this for the anime onlys out there. But before we get into the video, if it's your first time here, welcome to my channel where I dissect manga and anime. So if you're a fan of either or both of these things, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. With that said, let's get straight into it. The story Arte is loosely derived from the life of Artemisia, who was a renaissance master painter, who successfully infiltrated the all-male ranks of the Academia dell'Arte. The story is set in the 16th century in the city of Florence, which is in modern-day Italy. At that time, the city of Florence was regarded as a cultural hub, boasting of cultural and creative revival which was used to celebrate the renaissance. In this setting, we find a young girl, our main character Arte. Arte always had the dream of becoming an artist to help with the renewing of civilization. However, at that time, becoming an artist was a thing for only men. In the words of Nania de Medici, whoever wants to do things as they wish ought to take care not to be born a woman. And although she said that in 1479, it clearly defines the struggle that Arte was going through. Her dad was the only one who supported her dreams and passions, and so when he tragically died, they began pressuring her to marry a nobleman and spend the rest of her life as a housewife so that she won't destroy the family name. But of course, Arte Arte had other plans. She decided that she wasn't just going to let her life go by just like that, and so she determined to power through the hurdles and become an artist anyway. The only problem though, is that to become a master artisan in the time of the Renaissance, the young artisan needed to be an apprentice to another master artisan that would act as her mentor. She then went to meet a lot of masters, but none would accept her simply because of the gender. Well, all except Leo, who chose her. After Leo takes her in as a disciple, Arte is now faced with the challenges of a new life far away from the comfort of her upbringing, as she was from a noble family. Working as an apprentice, Arte must learn to earn a living, master her artistry, and also tackle the challenges that appear along the journey to becoming a full-fledged master artisan. From this story, alone, you can already tell that this is going to be an interesting watch. And if you've read the manga, you would realize that they have kept the plot entirely the same, not altering the story in any shape or form so far. The first step to getting a great manga to anime crossover is keeping the story the same. Yes, writers for the big screen get some artistic license to change a few things to make them more suited to the big screen, but they must do all of that without losing the essence of the story. And frankly, the writers of this did that exceptionally well. The original story itself is compelling because of the realism associated with the times. The time of the Renaissance was indeed a tough time for women, and being able to see that story through the eyes of a little girl is simply genius. And that's another thing they do really well with this anime. They never lose sight of the whole setting. The whole series puts in a lot of effort to stick to the historical detail, which makes this an exceptional piece to watch. From the way everyone is dressed, to the way they speak and interact with one another, everything is reminiscent of the time of the Renaissance. Shout out to the director, Takayuki Hama for making this possible. For its characters, we have Arte, who is the center of the whole piece. She's played by Mikiko Komatsu. Then we have Leo, who is Arte's mentor, and is played by Katsuyuki Konoshi. These are the two main characters that we see throughout the series. However, there are a few others that we see sparingly. There's Daphne, played by Haruka Tamatsu. Angelo, played by Junya Inoki. Dasho, played by Kiyono Yasuna. Yuri, and no, not the kind you're thinking of. But we have Yuri, played by Kasuki Toriyumi. Catalina, played by M.A.O. Sophia, played by Rie Tanaka, Veronica, played by Sayaka Ohara, Ubertino, played by Yosuke Akimoto, and Arte's father, although he only appears in episode 1, played by Yutaka Oyama. We would have loved to touch on each of these cast members, but that would probably take forever. However, from what we can see, these characters play off each other excellently, which we believe is a good result of good chemistry all around. As of the time of this video, there are currently 7 episodes out. More details on how you can watch the series online at the end of the video.
video, so make sure you watch to the end to find out. We're not going to be looking at the seven episodes individually, however, we're going to be looking at the first two episodes because these are the episodes that introduce us all to the characters and create the premise that the rest of the series is most likely going to be based upon. We've already talked about the plot, so no need to go over that again, but most of episode one is just beginning that plot. Her father died, then she was told to be married into a noble family to become a housewife. She rejects and starts to search for her mentor, and finally Leo picks her, but all things are definitely not rosy after that. To show how serious she was about the whole thing, Arte had to cut her hair off in episode one, following through what is now seen as the obligatory anime haircutting ritual. Honestly, in anime, nothing screams seriousness like cutting your fucking hair, apparently. But what we like about this act and the rest of the series is that Arte is never trying to become a boy just so she can become an artisan. She very much wants to be regarded as an artisan regardless of her gender. So her cutting her hair was not in any way her trying to look more like a boy, but basically a rite of passage thing. We can see this when Leo tells her to dress like a boy so she can attend a dissection. She is visibly unhappy about this as she very much prefers to be a girl. The great thing about this is the fact that it's not in your face like a girl power slogan just slapped right across the face of the screen. It's more subtle and baked into the character so that we believe this is something Arte can do, and not really something they just have to do to satisfy the audience. But cutting her hair is not the end of it. Arte still had a lot to do to prove to everyone that she can become an artisan without having to give up her femininity. Femin- you know what? Fuck it. That's just a difficult word to pronounce, but you understand what I'm saying. In episode 2, Arte has to rebuild her rooftop shack into something she can actually live in, and she also tries to get into another studio so she can sketch her sculpture. She was closely watched by the men as she performed these tasks because they wanted to know whether she was capable of handling whatever they could throw at her. And yes, doing all those heavy lifting and pulling was quite difficult wearing Renaissance feminine clothes. Although, she is lucky she wasn't born about a hundred years later, when women's corsets started covering their waists. All of these showed the audience both the strengths and the weaknesses of Arte, making her a well-balanced character. She's naive, but she's motivated, and this makes for a good mix. We can go into more detail about her interaction with Angelo and his many sisters, but that's not for today. Just watch the series to find out. Speaking of which, why should you watch this series? Well, it's an excellent depiction of the Renaissance era, so if you're looking to learn some history while catching up on your Japanese, then this is definitely the anime for you. Apart from that, it also teaches resilience and willpower, as we see Arte hurtle through every circumstance thrown at her, just to get to her desired goal. But this is not just a bunch of lessons, it also features excellent character design that doesn't stray too far from the manga version. The acting is excellent as we've mentioned before, and the score is not too shabby. All in all, it's a really well-made and well-rounded anime series. 10 out of 10, would recommend. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on the bell notification so you get no notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching, I've been broken obsessed in my otaku ways, and I will see all of you lovely people next time.